Hey guys, welcome back. Episode 90 of the Resistance Broadcast, presented to you by StarWarsNewsNet.com. I'm your host, Patrick Covey. Here joining me, as always, are the leaders of the Resistance, kicking it off this week. He's the man from Kentucky, Mr. Bill Sheehy. How are you doing? Shoo, I am ready to go. It's been a whirlwind of a week. Happy to be here, ready to talk about some wars that are happening in the stars. And back again this week, he's the guy who broke the big story that's taken the internet by storm, Mr. James Bainey. Yeah, I apparently made a pretty big impact because this week uh, Bill decided <laughs> to steal my intro from last week. <laughs> and uh, so far we're off to a pretty good start. I, uh, it has been uh, a pretty fun week for me, and again, I am excited to talk about Star Wars. And he's now officially known legally as John Hoey and Company. It's Mr. John Hoey. Hey guys, uh, we've never done this before, so I do just want to um, break a rumor that I heard uh, today that uh, we actually have reshot 80% of this podcast episode. That's true. Can confirm. And big if true. One thing I can confirm, though, is that The Last Jedi is going to be in theaters next month. How That's crazy. 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 How crazy does That's that sound? That's insane. Yeah. Woo! But I am excited to be here, so uh, let's get this thing cracking kicking it off this week we have poll results we asked you guys on twitter out of the hot star wars the last jedi topics lately let's hear your thoughts on raylo 10 percent of you said what's raylo 42 percent of you said yes and 48 percent of you say no looks like we got a lot of raylo downers out there guys good good <laughs> good, good. And our best comment came from Evan on Twitter, at Harris, Harris EV 9 He said, as a Raylo fan, there's different levels. It's based on the understanding of a strong connection between Ray and Kylo, not always romantic. And we'll be putting out a new poll for you guys uh, over this next week, so keep your eyes peeled on our Twitter, at RBATSWNN. We'll have that up for you guys to discuss and vote. I believe we have a giveaway winner announcement this week for Ooh. a certain Last Jedi ski speeder. Huh? Mr. John Howey, do you have those results? Oh, I do have the results. Yeah, what's crazy is we don't even know what a ski speeder really does except churn up some, some red dust, but <laughs> someone's going to have their chance to get their hands on one before it hits theaters, that's for sure. I think there's some skiing involved. I think I... there might be some speeding involved mm -hmm. <laughs> with the skiing. But um, if I can get a... Christmas vacation drum roll, please. <gasps> and can I get joy, a Bill Sheehy joy to the world? Joy to the world. And the winner is... <laughs> Emily Van Natter at Woo. Emmy Van 99. Congratulations, Emily. You got uh, yourself woo. a little Last Jedi ski speeder with Captain Poe Dameron action figure and Force Link activation. Envious. That sounded like a 90s cartoon commercial. <laughs> Coming at you. Batteries not included, meter. right? Yeah, and those those commercials were always the best. Like th they always <laughs> look like you really wanted those toys, you know. But uh, yeah, we'll get in touch with you via a DM from our Twitter account and get your information and get that out to you. So congratulations, you won, and thanks for being a part of the resistance. Woo! Thank you. Grazie. And now we're gonna send it over to James Bainey for Newsnet. We have a few new articles that are basically discussions with our two protagonists in The Last Jedi. I say two because Ryan Johnson in New York Times described it that way, saying, quote, Ray and Kylo are almost two halves of our protagonists. Now, one article was on Daisy Ridley from Yahoo Japan, and she was asked not only about balance between good and evil, the light and the dark, but also about her parentage. Um, and how it would be handled in the upcoming film. She said, and this is, of course, translated from Japanese, whatever the answer is, I hope everyone will enjoy that moment. I knew the answer a few years ago, but the story that Ryan Johnson created was so wonderful, I couldn't believe it. Honestly, I was very moved. I think that everyone will be in that moment. Now, Daisy does go on to talk about training and other things on the set, but her lineage is something that's been highly debated for nearly two years, if not more. Skipping over to the GQ article with Adam Driver, 
He at first talked about why he was drawn to the character of Kylo Ren, saying that it was described to him as having things skinned, uh, peeling away layers to evolve into other people. Um, As he went on into details about his place and his relation to Rey, he stated, and this is a quote, You have also the hidden identity of this princess who's hiding who she really is so she can survive, and Kylo Ren and her hiding behind these artifices. John, I know you want to go first, so I'm going to ask you, did Adam Driver just spoil Rey's lineage? Is she actually royalty? Uh, what's funny is it could be like one of those, um, we're going to say it isn't, so then you don't think it is, but then it really is. So, I mean, he may have, he may not have, but I saw today that the author of the article admitted that it was taken out of context and put out there on Mm -hmm. purpose to get clicks and get attention. So I think it was confirmed that he was actually talking about in the full context about a Kurosawa film, uh, and, and making a metaphor or an analogy about uh, how mm-hmm. there are similarities, but he wasn't saying that Ray was a princess. So, But a lot of people took off with that. So I have to give credit to uh, Jordan Pate, who um, did this version of the article for us at Star Wars News Net, because he speculated the heck out of that before the context was put into perspective yesterday. So props to him on that. Um, in terms of uh, Daisy's comments, it's just like we're kicking that can down the road as we're 35 or however many days away, 38 days away from the movie um the the themes were blurring lines here between the the dark and the light um and as far as the 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 parentage with ray's parents um it's becoming like she's saying it's going to be revealed so we're going to find it out but they're really underplaying this thing making it seem like it's really not that big of a deal Mm -hmm. um so unless that's a total troll job i'm starting to lean more and more towards that we don't know who her parents are and that it won't necessarily um have a big impact on where she goes going forward The biggest takeaway I get from this article is that Daisy Ridley has known for almost two and a half to three years where the story is going, and she hasn't said a word. You know, Mark Hamill, like, you you tell him when a trailer is happening, and then he tweets it out. So So you you give Daisy Ridley your ATM code, and you trust her Exactly. (laughs) Oh, in a heartbeat. She can have all of my credit cards. I only have one, so it's good. Um, So, yeah. Um, In reference to... uh, the prince versus princess uh co- out of context controversy it, it it didn't make any sense to me to uh, introduce like kind of a royalty kind of angle to it um unless it was like they were brother and sister which they would just be rehashing jaina and jason solo which i don't think they're gonna do um I don't think that we learned a whole lot from it, and I think people were just looking for something to grab onto. And even I think the, the you said the writer even admitted that like this was for clickbait, yeah, right? So yeah, um, it, it, interesting kind of to hear Adam Driver's perspective because I feel like he's kind of a cerebral, quiet dude who really like gets into the character and wants to take a deep dive into who he is. So hearing these comments are really really cool. But yeah, hated that it was taken out of context and people made a big deal about it. Pat, I'm going to throw to you really quick too. I want to I want to hear you talk a little bit about the uh, co-protagonist situation that Ryan Johnson was talking about. Well, the whole situation with the whole Ryan Johnson co-protagonist was that he was like, "Look, the characters of Ray and Kylo are are two halves." of like one central main idea and of course of course that's the idea you're looking at moving into this film we've heard a lot of early rumors in the film that they're gonna spend a lot of time in this film on uh ray and with kylo and of course you're still gonna get your little side adventures with all the other characters but they're the main focus of this film they both have to play a bigger part towards the central story and ultimately they're gonna have to tie together it's just a good plot device it helps drive the story forward and just gives you two halves of the same whole. I think that's one of the best things uh, we got out of the original trilogy was those moments where you might see Luke with the rest of the Millennium Falcon crew, and then they'll cut over to Darth Vader, and he'll be doing some stuff on the side, and they keep going back and forth until ultimately they meet at the end. I love this. Thank you, Ryan Johnson. Yeah, I find it interesting that he is making it a point to say dual protagonists as opposed to she's mm-hmm. half of a whole, but she's the protagonist, he's the antagonist. Mm-hmm. It's go- it's coming from the angle that 
Kylo Ren thinks what he's doing is right, and he really is passionate about it, and, and he believes in it. So he is the protagonist to himself. Those are without a doubt always the best villains too, because right. it, it, it's they think what they're doing is right, and I love kind of this this concept to begin with, because you don't take the son of two of the, some of our favorite characters in Star Wars and make him side fiddle and make him just this evil like dude in the background twiggling his little mustache. You make him complex. He fell to the dark side for a reason. He he thinks that he's fulfilling some great destiny that his grandfather somehow failed. Um, so Although, would, really, it would be funny to see Adam Driver just like twiddling some kind of like old timey mustache and be like, yeah. he can do it. Like he he could do it. Like I feel like I see the island. I see it. <laughs> I think it's the most interesting to hear that they're both protagonists simply because he's not playing the antagonist. Take an example like The Dark Knight, for instance. Like, yeah, that movie was very like, here's one side and, you know, Heath Ledger's Joker is like the opposite side. But we never were rooting for the Joker. He was never like this character that we kind of felt like was someone that we could side with and... I think that is what makes him the antagonist. And if Kylo is the protagonist of this story, then the antagonist is someone that Kylo is against. And I'm trying to figure out what that means in the whole thing. And I think he's, I think he might just simply be saying, look, these are are two characters that you are going to care about. And Mm -hmm. it might not be so much that you're rooting for Kylo to win, but you're rooting for him simply because you feel bad about like what is going on in his life that you're like, dude, just get, get it together and figure it out and, and stop doing what you're doing. Maybe I feel like that can be more relatable to people too. Cause we've all like, Oh, for sure. Do, do yeah. the right thing. Like we all, we, we always strive to do that and we, we make some mistakes and I think that's even more relatable uh, to, to Ray in, in some aspects because I mean, some people say she's a Mary Sue. I don't believe that. She's obviously had a rough upbringing, but she's finding something inside of her. Kyle is doing the exact same thing. He's finding that's who who's in, what's inside of him and making it and, and trying to find his way in the galaxy. And I, I think that there's something uh, poetic to it, and I think there's something to, to root for there, even if he did kill uh, Han Solo. Well, it sounds like you're kind of giving a, a a brief overview of the Last Jedi. So let, yeah. let's let's move on to the next story. I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Um, w- you may recall, you know, we've seen uh, a few random flyers from Japan that have kind of pitched the movie, and when translated back into English, we get a few tidbits. So. Sure enough, um, we have another one of these that surfaced. So because I'm a huge classic Godzilla fan, I'm going to attempt to read this to you verbatim. All right. Okay, go ahead. Do it. The light, the darkness, Ray is this in and Japanese? Kylo. What was that? Is this Japanese? Like this is in Japanese? Yeah, this is in full Japanese. Okay, cool. I'm <laughs> fluent. Who knew? The light, the darkness, Ray and Kylo, two people who seem to move between the two. A new shocking development is hinted to await them in Star Wars The Last Jedi. Although the world was shocked to see that the hand offered to Rey belonged to that of Kylo Ren, what awaits Rey and Kylo is the question of the light or the darkness, as together they are tossed and moved by the powerful force. Rey, who even though in the previous film The Force Awakens awakened the force, (laughs) <laughs> carries a sense of being lost and unsure. Will she be taken away by the darkness? Kylo, who killed Han Solo, spoiler alert, that's not in Japanese, despite the fact that he was his real father, will the hopeful small amount of light that still remains in his heart be able to undo the darkness? These two figures who seem to resonate with each other we cannot take our eyes off them. Keep your eyes peeled for Ray and Kylo, the two people who resonate. You forgot the next line that said, all your base are belong to us now. <laughs> what did I just read? You read a very good synopsis of The Last Jedi and an even better synopsis that gave us every event of The Force Awakens. The yes. Force Awakens, where The Force awoke- Awakened... <laughs> Google Translate has some uh, work to do. Let's put it they, that. they do. But 
I, it, once again, this hits on that we've been talking about the dual protagonists of The Last Jedi being Rey and Kylo. And this is kind of that same kind of idea that is... And I think they're giving us a little bit of hope that and I don't want to see it. Um, I think it would be too much like the original trilogy uh, if if they redeem Kylo in some way. what what The fact that they're even talking about the light that still re- remains... Um, is a little bit, and and I don't want to take the, I don't want people to take this out of context or think that I'm gonna hate it if it happens. It's a little disappointing if they're gonna go down the same road, um, because I, I you hear that Ryan Johnson's taking it in new and expected places and redeeming Kylo in the second movie. We've seen this before, so um, interesting kind of things that maybe Ray and Kylo maybe going on uh, are on different paths, um, but yeah, it just it feels. A little too familiar. Pat, what do you think about this crazy Japanese article? Well, first of all, like you guys were saying, Translate is a little jacked up, and I think it does need a little bit of work. Um, (laughs) But I feel like Ryan Johnson knows what he's doing with this film. He's he's charting his own path. He wants to do something that's never been done before in cinema in terms of uh, sci-fi, space opera, whatever you may call it. Uh, He's really trying to drive this in a new way that doesn't feel like a rehash it doesn't feel like uh bill was saying where you know it's been done before we really need to start setting new standards for these movies like breaking bounds of what we feel we're so used to in film and cinema and start figuring this out and i think ryan johnson has done something and we are going to be unbelievably blown away with whatever the product is sure there's going to be things about this we're not going to be used to at face value but i think with time and repeated viewing i think we'll get a little bit more used to it we'll start to understand it a little better but of course there's going to be the complainers so when push comes to shove you can't win with everyone but that's okay because i personally have full faith in what ryan's doing with this film john are you a godzilla fan yeah totally man I actually didn't even see that new movie. I was like hyped because I liked that first teaser trailer. And then everyone was like, that movie sucked. So I didn't go see it. By Rogue One director Gareth Edwards. Yeah, the guy who sort of directed Rogue One. Um, <laughs> yeah, my take on this thing is that we have to remember that this is from Star Wars' official Japanese website. So kind of like how StarWars.com just face value describes what happened in the trailer. We all know that what we saw didn't really happen. So I think that we have to look at this from they're towing the company line. They're not going to dig deep like we do as fans. So when they say things like, as he shows his hand to her and she takes it, it's like, yeah, dude, we saw that in the trailer, but that doesn't mean that's going to happen. And it really doesn't have anything to do with what Ryan Johnson is trying to tell us. So they're just doing a postcard that basically says what happens in the trailer. So I'm I'm just taking that at, at face value because even though it's international, it is from the Japanese official Star Wars website. So they're not going to you know dig deeper into what the things really mean. So uh, it's it's a ne- you know I don't want to be a negative uh, Nelly here, but uh, this this thing uh, it doesn't really do much for me. It doesn't yeah, give me I'm anything. The- Yeah, I'm the same way. I I really don't think there's a whole lot to this. I think basically, I think we kind of talked about this on the last uh, flyer that we saw too. It kind of just tells you the story of what we think is going to happen. It's pretty like, what's going to happen? Is our people going to go to the light side or are people going to go to the dark? Find out in the next episode. Why does Kylo Ren want to shoot his mom? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I think it's pretty basic and straightforward. The only thing I can say is that in in our English marketing, it doesn't seem like they really have in writing put a lot of emphasis on the fact that it's like Ray and Kylo together. I think that's something that we're just kind of making up. And maybe the the Japanese culture, the Japanese marketing is trying to pick up on, on the, I don't know, little things that we're saying as a fandom and then trying to say like, oh, yeah, Japanese people, you, you might be interested in this, too. But I actually haven't seen anything that really pushes the whole like besides the directors talking amongst themselves, you know, the directors and the actors and things. We just discussed all that. You know what I mean? What does it mean for Ray and Kylo to both be protagonists? I haven't seen that like as actual piece of marketing, but it was kind of cool to see it in this Japanese piece of marketing. But other than that, like I said, it's a pretty basic uh, overview of the whole story and and I don't think there's really much you can pull from it. 
Okay, so we were just in the middle of recording our episode and James rudely interrupted me while I was doing a segment, <laughs> but for good reason, because I was just doing our Scoundrels Rundown and James was watching a brand new The Last Jedi TV spot that I guess just premiered. So um, we just got, we just need to start talking about this thing. So yeah. guys, we all just saw what's, I mean, whoa, <laughs> 45 seconds, but whoa. The immediate takeaway in my first reaction was, oh my God, Luke Skywalker in the Falcon. Luke Skywalker's in the Falcon. Luke Skywalker's in the Falcon. And so the, <laughs> I'm, I'm still kind of just kind of reacting to it. These are my raw thoughts right now. Okay, um, yeah. Did he turn the lights on with the Force? Or did, does, he, does, he, does he remember where the light switch is? I, I'm sure he probably I, does. I can't, either I can't way, imagine he's either just, way like, is just acceptable. I think he's chill right now. Yeah. Did he do a Han Solo style where he hits the top and they all just come on? Yeah. Do you think he find he found the remote that he practiced with the one the way Finn found it in the last movie? He's like, <laughs> I'm that sure. Damn I bet. Thing, that I'm damn sure. Thing. I bet. Who put this? Yeah. Here? So this popped up and I was like, I was like, okay, so this is uh, this is interesting. It must be like a GIF or just a couple clips mm-hmm. from the the trailer. And then it, it's playing, and I think like the very first scene is like something we've seen before. But then it immediately went to this other thing, and I was like what is this I, I i had to check i'm like is this star wars what is this is this a fan in an outfit what is this edit and every then, every single one of us was like you're you're kidding stop we need to keep we want to keep yeah. this going and <laughs> as soon as the lights come on i see it's mark hamill and i'm like this is a legit like new scene <laughs> I and i was like first, okay one new scene no big deal as the trailer continues on yeah. holy crap guys yeah. it was like new action shots from this fight from that fight all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff um, I, I mean, I, yeah. The, the first shot is the exterior of the Falcon, right? Parked there on mm-hmm. Octo. Yes. A- and then we see Luke uh, with his dark clothes on, which means it wasn't immediately after Ray met him because he was in his white um, robe when she met him. But he looks like he's wearing that thing that he was wearing when he was in the cave saying it's time for the Jedi to end or when he's afraid of the raw strength of that, that dark, like, poncho Luke thing I was talking about. So... I'm thinking, I mean, who knows, but he turns her away with this negativity, like, I'm done with this stuff, and then she kind of, like, leaves, and he, like, creeps down the mountain and finds the Falcon and is like, oh, my God, and he, like, goes up on there, and then, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm just, <laughs> Patrick, what what are your thoughts? Because, like, I'm just like, Bleh. Well, if there's anything I've learned from this trailer is next time I go to Yellowstone National Park, I might see a falcon come shooting up out of what appears to be a geyser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like the Falcon TV spot. Uh-huh. It really is. There is one. Uh, there's another scene of, of Kylo holding the, the saber, his saber up close. That's not that crazy. The, the next big shot to me that I'm like, dude, that's a huge, awesome reveal is the throne room. We see a whole yeah. open Hux was in there. room, Hux was new there. lines from Snoke. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember exactly what he says, but I think it's like, a, you know, Dark, like darkness or light rise. Yeah. Dark side. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, I think it's the, the line dark, darkness, the darkness will rise rises the and the light, light meets it. Yeah, um, we see all the Praetorian guards. We I'm looking at Hux. He's standing there like awaiting. He's got his arms behind his back looking at who's ever moving down this aisle way. I imagine he looks like he's waiting for Ray, his valet right? to bring his car to him. That's what he looks like he's doing. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, actually he does. does. I think one of the coolest things that I saw was uh, I th- I originally thought in the like the trailer, the, like this new one, that that when Finn and Phasma were going at it, like, oh, it's just Finn come saying, come on. But now I think it may be a new line with Phasma because like, it did not sound like Finn. Like that's... Hmm. I'm not a hundred percent sure, and I've watched it two times, and we're talking about it just as as we're all kind of it's very raw. But that's kind of yeah. like the impression that I get that like this is very obviously a very emotional scene, and it's for both of them. So that's once again my favorite part of the new tra- of the tr- Monday Night Football trailer was Finn and Phasma. So getting this again was really really cool. Ray in the rain igniting her lightsaber mm-hmm. towards the end. That's not her training. Like she's about to fight someone there. So yeah. uh, is she? Do you guys think sh- there's a fight that's going to happen on Octo? This is what I'm thinking. I saw that scene. I see Luke on the ground, and I see Ray up there, and it's raining. And that amount of mm. rain to me is the same amount of rain in the Force, the Force Vision, and Force Awakens. That's a mm. good point. That might actually be the confirmation that that could be that that was that hasn't happened yet that will happen well and i think the the 
impression the trailer wants you to give, or that it gives me at least, is that like Ray is very angry with Luke for some reason, and like he's like, this is not going to go the way you think. And the way that I take it is that like Ray is like about to like attack Luke, which I know may seem a little like, mm. and well, yeah, but like, what if like that scene is like the Knights of Ren are coming? And like he's talking to the Knights of Ren, like this is not going to go the way you think. Uh, off the top, hmm. yeah, that's true. It looks like he's talking to Ray, but he could be talking to someone else. Mm-hmm. Just off the top of my head, if we're going with that, that that is a, it's the scene from the Force Vision in the Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. That might be that happens. The Knights of Ren fight, but all get killed. And then when Kylo retreats and goes back, he's angry and he destroys his helmet because if there's no more Knights of Ren, he doesn't need that helmet anymore. And he's Mm -hmm. just mad that he just lost another battle to that stupid scavenger. I mean, maybe that's where the pieces are falling together. Uh, Yeah, or it's... uh, I keep thinking to that scene in that Force forward or whatever we're going to try to call that thing now where he stabs someone from behind who looks like they were going after Rey... Mm -hmm. But is it one of those things like, no, she's mine to deal with because she messed me up in the the last movie and you Mm -hmm. don't get the satisfaction? Like, I'm interested to see why that guy gets. So I'm I'm getting on board with that thing that that's we're looking at a fast forward or a flash forward in uh, The Force Awakens. And you're right. I think the the rain and the darkness there, it definitely correlates. So that could be that. Um, That's 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 pretty cool. I mean, 45 seconds. There's just so much going on here. And then the Falcon blasting up out of the surface, that is insane. That is so, who's yeah. flying that thing? Who's in that Falcon? If I, that's what I was thinking. It, We're seeing somebody if, shooting from the guns down below, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's Poe. I, I want to say Poe crashes his ski speeder and then he, and he gets he gets behind the the wheel of the Falcon finally. And if you guys saw that one ex- little couple extra seconds of extended of that cave sequence from the original Monday Night Football trailer, you see the Falcon actually goes up towards the surface from underground in the cave. Mm-hmm. I believe, and you see light shining down on the Falcon as it's going straight up. I believe that's where it's going to come out of that geyser spot, mm-hmm. like what we just saw. So exactly. that'll be a continuation of the cave sequence. Is it a geyser? They just blast. No, out I think of it's just a hole in the surface. cave. Mm-hmm. It's a hole in the cave, but the, the motion and the, all the dust coming out makes oh it look my like God. a guy. So, the, the, so the there's Falcon another is... scene, too. We, we see the Falcon moving around, too, on the surface, but there's yeah. also yeah. this other shot of it shows Finn in the ski speeder looking up at what I assume is the Falcon blowing away a bunch of TIE fighters, which is yeah. kind of funny. Maybe mm-hmm. that points yeah. back to its Poe again. But uh, he's he's screaming, yeah, yeah, like they're getting him. You know, that's what I mean? one hell of a so, pilot again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> rehash of Empire Strikes Back. This is a rehash of Force Awakens. <laughs> that guy's still a hell of a pilot. Confirmed. <laughs> we got another shot of Leia in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a what? long close-up shot. She doesn't say anything. Looks like the but same she's shot there. from the first trailer, but for like backed away a little bit. It's not on her face. It's uh, like backed away. We see her more her whole body in front of that like console or whatever, like your standard Resistance Rebellion console type thingy. <laughs> yeah, my, I mean, my final. Mm-hmm. Th- I have to go watch this five hundred more times after we we finish yeah. recording the episode. But like, this is like the TV spot of the Falcon for me. Like, it starts with Luke on the Falcon, and the lasting memory that sticks out the most for me is that thing blasting up out mm-hmm. of the surface of crate. It's just like one of those things where we're reminded that the Falcon is kind of a character, even though it's just a vehicle. But awesome TV spot. 45 seconds of just pure action. I am on another level right now. Uh, don't don't let me get in my zone, as Kanye West would say. And I am thoroughly in my zone. Um, so, yes. Luke in the Falcon. Amazing. Just there, There's so many... It, it really doesn't give us that... like a. a a lot of new shots it give us it gives us a fair amount but the ones that it gives us are incredible and give us a really kind of a little bit of a, of a window into the last jedi and this is, was a really nice surprise <laughs> a, a surprise to be sure but a welcome one i feel like with this as we've all known when it comes to star wars clips as amazing as it looks like now if we're getting so excited just from seeing this on a small screen at home imagine what it's going to be like when we see this in all of these scenes in the cinema, December 14th. Imagine how amazing that's going to look. Hell yeah. Crystal clear, high quality surround sound. What are your thoughts on this, James? 
Well, I just tweeted it for everybody. <laughs> I tweeted it. Let everybody know that right in the middle of the episode, we watched it. And um, I, oh man, I, I don't know, man. Words are escaping me, guys. Like, I <laughs> just can't fathom how lucky we were to have captured this in this episode instead of having to wait another week to talk about this trailer. Um, and so many new scenes, man. I just, I'm just so pumped. I think, like, right, right now... Like, I might feel different by the time the episode airs, but, like, I'm really on board with this, like, whole Octu thing. Like, that that was something we saw from the past. Uh, or, I'm sorry, we saw something that was coming from the future that was a vision of the next uh, installment. Um, man, I think, I don't know, I think we need to get back to our regular podcast so that we can be done and watch it a million more times. Now, our next story comes from Neil Scanlon. Um, He is the head of Lucasfilm Creature Workshop, and he was recently interviewed by Empire Magazine. Now, from here through the rest of the story, we're going to chat about some potentially spoilery stuff. So keep in mind that these may kind of spoil something for you, but they were approved by Lucasfilm, so they are okay with people being aware of the facts in this story. So let's, let's talk about it. He took a moment to describe three new creatures to us, one being the Porgs and how the one that's seen on in the trailer mimics Chewie and even kind of has the same coloring, and that was on, intentional on, on their part to kind of mimic him. Um, there's also the caretakers of Octu uh, and how they're technically related to the Porgs, which is kind of interesting, uh, just a little bit more evolved, and they've become a sentient species, he was saying. Lastly, the crystal foxes of Crate saying that they have been feeding so long on the planet that their fur has become crystalline. So that actually makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Um, As a bonus, he also talked a little bit about BB-8 and his return in the second film, briefly describing one scene saying, BB-8 is in disguise and has to try to make his way without being recognized. It just seemed so threatening that his doppel- that his doppelganger would be the very one that may or may not discover him. Pat, tell me which of these are you most intrigued by and excited to learn more about in The Last Jedi. Uh, more than anything, not just because I am a huge Porg fan, I want to see that teamwork between him and Chewie. I want to see that dynamic and uh, how they work together, why Chewie is perfectly fine with him being around. Is there a part in the story where Chewie maybe doesn't like this Porg as much? There's a little bit of a scuffling and bad situations going on. I want to see how that turns out. John, what creature is the most intriguing in your opinion? It has to be the foxes just because... I feel like we know more about Porgs than we're even going to see in The Last Jedi at this point. Por- I mean, the whole Porg thing seems interesting. I mean, I was kind of trying to run with that for a while, that there's going to be the Porg, and he's going to be the Porg for the rest of the trilogy. But these foxes, I mean, I, I like the fact that in the behind-the-scenes reel, we saw animatronics, and now we're seeing in the trailer that looks like there's some CGI there, so they're going to be a blend creation, and looks like they're running towards that base that Leia is in, so we can assume that they're friendly, but we're not positive about that. Um, But my whole takeaway, not to jump away from creatures here, my whole takeaway from this article is the BB-8 scenes. I I can't wait to see this thing because I'm seeing this as our emotional relief to get away from the intensity of the movie. I can picture him in some... some, (laughs) If they put that together well, being some kind of hilarious scene where he's like trying to sneak by him like a like a Looney Tunes character, like tiptoeing by him, but rolling yeah. by him or something. So that that's my biggest takeaway from uh, this article. I definitely like, I think the, the creature stuff is, is cool, but far and away, the, the most interesting part about this is the BB-8 in disguise part, which suggests that he may be there with Finn or Rose, or at some point, like he's going to have to be in disguise, which like you said, <laughs> could be considered a, a spoiler. Which it doesn't. We don't know exactly where it's going to happen, so I I'm, I don't really care. So yeah, I think it's definitely it's 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 the most interesting part of the article because like it's it's cool to know some of that like oh well the the caretakers are a little bit more evolved porgs, but mm-hmm. like other than that like it's like oh now you see this this fox this crystal fox is actually made of crystal. Who knew? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it definitely coolest part was BB-8 in disguise, but. Creatures are cool. I love porks. I'm he's sitting here with Porgle. Like, he's, 
He's wearing like an o- like an overcoat with a hat and like he's uh-huh. like sneaking. That's exactly, <laughs> exactly. In a re- trench coat, BB with coat, a trench right. coat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm with you, Bill. The the crystal foxes. Okay, yeah, we kind of already knew that. The, as far as the porg with the with Chewbacca, it's like okay, I didn't really pick up on the fact that he had the same coloring, but I did pick up on the fact that he's kind of cute in the sense that he looks at Chewbacca like a dad or something like that. And he's like, Oh, I'll do what he does. He's cool. Um, so there's that. There's also the, uh, stuff you guys were talking about BB eight. And I feel like that's a, I feel like that kind of is a spoiler thing. He says he may or may not be the one who captures him. All right. So he's the one who captures him. You know what I mean? (laughs) I think I kind of gave that away. So we do know that BB eight is going to get caught by BB nine E. So that kind of was cool to hear, I guess. Um, but I, th- I actually think, I know it sounds kind of weird, but I think the most intriguing thing to me was the fact that they, they're they trying to tell me the caretakers are evolved porgs. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> what happened? Like, I don't know what happened to uh, the, the species that were on that island. They were trying to explain, okay, well, you know, their DNA can only reach so far, and they have they obviously have to be creatures that, that weren't, like, reaching out to other places and stuff. So we kind of went very basic with them and, and things. And, and the caretakers actually are like more evolved mm. Borgs. They're just they like sentient. Borgs. I mean, that like, kind of what in a weird way, it kind of reminds me of goofy and Disney, like Disney movies. Cause like you have goofy, who's like a dog. And then you have Pluto who is a lesser dog, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. an interesting so, analogy, but yes, I totally agree. Like with Goofy you. can play sports, but Pluto can just like bark. Yeah, he, exactly. <laughs> like Pluto can't play tennis. What's that all about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but apparently the caretakers like in that book star wars made easy it shows the caretakers like trying to catch porgs and nets so and, like trying to lure them with a fish flute so like caretakers i think hunt porgs and maybe yeah that little guy who's with chewy is like the last survivor or something i mean <laughs> they did say that the caretakers i guess eat the porgs too which is kind of weird now i'm starting to think it's like kind of a weird cannibalism so i don't yeah, really know yeah. what's going on but um the hills of octu have eyes <laughs> all right well i mean i think we've talked about it uh so i'm excited for the movie i think there's going to be some even more interesting creatures once we get to like canto bite and things like that but i think that pretty much wraps the main stories that uh we need to talk about this week back to you pat thanks james that's like me going to the jungle and finding a monkey and trying to eat it <laughs> speaking of monkeys we're gonna send it over to a monkey himself it's mr john for a scoundrel's rundown. All right, hold on to your banana peels, folks. Punch it. As we mentioned last week, Star Wars Newsnet just had its five-year anniversary. And in celebration of that, and a thank you to all of our readers and listeners, first of all, thank you, our owner and editor-in-chief, Val Trichkov, has announced a giveaway. And to enter, all you need to do is go to our article on Star Wars Newsnet. The article's called, Happy 5th Birthday Star Wars Newsnet. And just leave us a comment, any comment, like, what can we do to improve the site? What do you like? What do you not like? Why John Hoey is your favoritist writer ever? Just kidding. Don't say anything, Bill. But seriously, anything you want to say, leave a comment, and you're entered to win one of 15 awesome prizes. So head over there after listening to the show. Enter, leave a comment, and you're entered to win some awesome swag. Everyone wants some swag. Now, speaking of swag, Walmart has released a presser announcing four exclusive Funko sets. Walmart and Funko were going old school. They're taking Star Wars fans back to iconic scenes from the original 1977 film with four exclusive Funko Star Wars movie moments collectible toys. The four sets are the Cantina face-off between Han Solo and Greedo, so you can make Han shoot first again if you'd like. Uh, The Death Star duel between Obi-Wan and Vader. The escape pod landing in Tatooine with R2 and C-3PO. And the trash compactor escape, Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia fighting a, and it says here, quote, a smelly Dianoga. I didn't know that we knew that it was smelly, but apparently that's (laughs) canon now according to uh, Funko. Now, these sets are just exclusive only to Walmart, and they start hitting shelves this month and will be around $25 each, so get them while you can. But be nice now. No throwing elbows to fend off other shoppers. You can't just flip a coin to a Walmart employee and say sorry about the mess and walk away. That doesn't fly at Walmart, folks. Now, on to comics. Let's check in with our friends at Comics with Kenobi for this week's comic review. Hey there, Resistance Broadcast. This week in Marvel Comics is simply stunning. In the pages of Darth Vader number 7, we learn a great deal about the Jedi who have survived Order 66. And if you are a 
fluent reader and speaker of Arabesh, you may find that there are many names that will be intriguing to you, including a Quinlan Voss. We also find out that Emperor Palpatine's plans for Jocasta Nu is more alive than dead, something we did not see coming at Comics with Kenobi, but we're not surprised given how this second volume of Darth Vader is truly meshing completely well with the Star Wars universe as we know it, one that we know from the films and the TV shows and so much more. It's out in shops now, and of course it's on Comixology or the Marvel app, Cannot recommend this one highly enough. Definitely give it a read. Back to you. Thanks, Matt. Be sure to follow them on Twitter at Comics WTH Kenobi. Uh, that's Comics with Kenobi, just without the eye in the middle. The Last Jedi International promotion has begun, as we talked about earlier in Newsnet. Last week, I described the short cut of the Monday Night Football full trailer. Well, now the official international cut of the trailer has been released, and it's about a minute and a half long and pretty much a blend of the first teaser from Celebration and the full trailer released on October 9th. The only new footage is a shot of Rey's face in the cave that we saw Luke in at the end of the first teaser, saying that she needs help. And two new visual shots, one of BB-8 looking around a corner, perhaps when he's doing his little disguise thing, and a shot of C-3PO at what looks like some kind of resistance base looking as neurotic as he usually does. Now, in addition to this, a new TV spot has popped up during the World Series. That damn World Series that my Yankees are not in. Anyway, this TV spot, the only new shot, is a bit more of Ray approaching that Force tree amidst that fog as we get the look of her face while she's surveying the area. Unlike The Force Awakens, there's nothing big added here. No real major shots, but as always, we'll keep you posted on these things as they come out. Now, either way, the wait is almost over. The Last Jedi comes out next month. We're actually only 38 days away from The Last Jedi. I really can't believe it. So, unlike Garvin Drees, who selfishly lied to his wingmen by saying almost there for six minutes in A New Hope while they attack the Death Star, I will say this knowing you are all safe from TIE Fire Fire. We're almost there, folks. For all of these stories and more, go to StarWarsNewsNet.com, the best source for all things Star Wars. Now, before I go, remember, kids... Jedi's turning into wild dogs is silly. And that is your Scoundrels Rundown for this week. Chewy, you wild dog, get us out of here. And now we're going to head over to Bill Sheehy for Is the Force With You? Thanks, Pat. In the words of Samuel L. Jackson in Revenge of the Sith, take a seat. Our first story today talks about Kathleen Kennedy appearing on the Star Wars show, and she's talking about the future of Star Wars, and talked about the next decade of Star Wars, not just Episode Nine or Han Solo. So she said, we're sitting down now, we're talking about the next 10 years of Star Wars stories, and we're looking narratively where they might go. Future stories beyond Episode Nine with these new characters, Rey, Poe, Finn, BB-8. But we're also working with people that are interested in coming into the Star Wars world and taking us to places that we haven't been yet. And that's exciting too because it's a vast galaxy far, far away. So the possibilities are endless. James, let me start with you. Are these comments, are they enlightening to you? And is the Force with you on them? Um, Yeah, actually the Force is with me like big time on this. Um, I have been someone who's kind of thought maybe they would go in a different direction, maybe even try to say that that one through nine is the Skywalker story, and we're going to do something different, maybe naming naming convention or something like that. Um, But this kind of proves to me that Kathleen Kennedy just has it in mind to continue the story with the characters that we're familiar from the sequel trilogy. So um, with that in mind, like I'm totally down with that and I'm totally down with what she's saying about bringing in new people. I think that's pretty obvious that they would want to bring in um, new characters and they'd want to bring in different directors and creatives working on this project. So all around, I don't think there was anything she said that I was um, really opposed to. So yeah, the force is with me. Absolutely. John Hoey, is the force with you? Simply yes. Um, Just because she said the next 10 years of Star Wars movies, which means we could potentially get to do this for another 10 years. It's exactly. not going to be like episode 19's done or episode uh, episode 19. Two, <laughs> episode 19 in 10 <laughs> years. Hey, the yeah. resistance broadcast yeah. is Two, here. <laughs> 2019 <laughs> is done and we're running out of movies. So you guys have nothing left to talk about. Um, so I'm excited to see that. Um, more importantly, that she named the characters saying, I mean, she left Kylo Ren out, but she said uh, Poe, Finn, Ray, and BB-8. So um, and that 
to me, says so she's con- kind of confirming that we may get some more saga movies out of this thing, unless she's talking about cartoons. But I don't think she is. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm ex- and the fact that they survive. Yeah. Yeah. It, exactly. And and we can only hope so because I've really grown to, out of just one movie, grown to love these characters. So I mean, bring it on. Ten more years of Star Wars movies. Uh, let's do this thing. The Force is with me, Bill. And Pat, since you're already taking a seat, is the Force with you? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me uh, let me stand up and get back up next to the mic. Again. <laughs> yeah, okay. apparently me and uh, John are standing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, in the case of this, uh, I feel like the Force is with me because Kathleen Kennedy, even though she is a woman of very few words, she's letting us know that they have good interests at heart. They want to give us a quality film. They are thinking about the future. They're not just gonna stop. They're actually looking forward. 10, maybe even 15, 20 years down the road. Uh, we know from previous interviews with Bob Arger, this is the case. Not a huge shocker, but the Force is with me. Awesome. I'm going to agree with everybody. The Force is definitely with me on this one. You don't buy Star Wars for $4 billion and not use it after Episode Nine. Um, it makes sense narratively that that's where they want to continue the story. Because um, even, like John said... People love these characters, and I love these characters. So seeing where they go and seeing where they go beyond Episode Nine um, is really exciting to see that they're thinking about it. So the Force is definitely with me on it. All right, our next story involves uh, a guest that we had on last week. Jermaine Lucier of io9 sat down with Dave Filoni of Star Wars Rebels, and he sat down and talked to him about his future. Uh, and Filoni said, I have an incredibly talented group of people working here. They've worked for me for all 12 years, and I've been here, so I feel indebted to them and want to keep creating work for them so they can use their abilities and tell great stories. I also want to keep pushing myself in areas that are challenging and new. I've had a lot of uh, experiences now interacting with live-action directors like Ryan Johnson, who's been really wonderful to me in showing me what their production is like. So he doesn't confirm that uh, his next project, but he confirms that it will definitely be a Star Wars project. So John Hoey... Is Dave Filoni uh, playing coy about what the future holds for Star Wars fans? Is the Force with you on this? The Force is with me on Dave Filoni just being the keeper of George Lucas's flame. Um, He seems really locked in with how this whole thing started. Um, And he seems to really want to pay tribute to that, even though reincarnating Jedi into dogs is really stupid. Um, (laughs) Christ! (laughs) Um, but he's only 43 years old. So th- the fact that he wants to stay with star Wars, he visited the last Jedi set to talk with Ryan about what it takes, not just to say hi, but what it takes to actually make a, uh, a major motion picture. And his quote even said like, whatever medium it is, I want to do it. So in other words, that's kind of to me, him saying the balls in Lucasfilm's court, I'm ready. Like if they mm. want to give me a standalone film, Let's, you know, let's do this thing. So the force is absolutely with me on Dave Filoni, not only honoring his staff, but honoring the legacy of Star Wars built by the maker himself, George Lucas. So I, it's with me all the way. Absolutely. Patrick Covey, is the force with you on this? Joe Castanu. <laughs> yes, the force is with me on this one. I feel like any chance that we can get to sit down and hear a few words from Dave Filoni is very, very good uh, in terms of keeping the canon alive and keeping fans very excited, not only for Rebels or Clone Wars, but for any Star Wars property or anything that Lucasfilm Animation decides to do moving forward. I feel like they're going to have a long road ahead of them. I think it's going to be successful. Of course, like with every animated property they've done, there's going to be a few bumps in the road. It's kind of expected in this part of the business now. But I feel like as long as Dave Filoni continues to head Lucasfilm Animation, nothing can go wrong. I mean, the man, like you guys were saying, was very close to George Lucas. He's the keeper of canon when it comes to uh, the animation. Of course, he's still working with the wonderful people over at Lucasfilm Story Group. But I feel like we're going to get some awesome stories here in the next few years that are going to blow our minds away. I absolutely agree with you. James Bainey is the force with you on Dave Filoni. One million percent. Like, this almost seems like the same thing that we were just talking a second ago, Kathleen Kennedy talking about the future of it. You know what I mean? Keep doing what you're doing. That's the moral of the story here. We love Dave Filoni. We want him to keep doing what he's doing, even though he is putting forced 
characters into wolves. Yes, John Hoey, I get it. Hey, we, and, and I'm going to throw confirmed it out there. Yet. That's not yeah, confirmed and, yet. Yeah, and that, that's not. But I am going. I am going to mention that I think most people are probably missing something in the latest episode of Rebels: the fact that when the wolf speaks, he says "doom," which sounds like D O O M. But I happen to be watching the episode with subtitles because it was like five in the morning, and my wife was sleeping. I'm feeding Bennett. And uh, I got it on subtitles, and I'm like, that wolf just said Doom, D-U-M-E, referring to Caleb Dune, which is Kanan's character's name. I'm just, I love it. I think Dave just pulled the wool over most people's eyes. I saw websites reporting, you know, that it said D-O-O-M, and that's not the case. I think he was relying on the fact that people are going to hear it and project something different. Ezra heard it and is projecting something different. The guy's a genius. I want him to keep working on Star Wars. So Force is with me. Wait a minute. You're saying he pulled the wool over our eyes? The, he pulled the wool. He pulled the sheep's clothing over our eyes. Bill, is the Force with you on my joke? The, f- <laughs> the Force is not with me. Uh, Sorry, man, go ahead. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, no, but in regards to Filoni... Yes, the Force is 100% with me. And not only do I think that this is him saying that, hey, I'm ready for it, you give it to him. Because he he is truly the keeper of canon. He is basically, not basically, he is George Lucas's chosen successor. So it, it, it makes sense that like he should stay at Lucasfilm as long as he wants. And by all indications, they want him, and they want him to keep making Star Wars stories, because that's what he does uh, really, really well, and I just feel like this is where uh, George Lucas, when he was 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 young, when he took it, when he first made Star Wars. So I think you can give Dave Filoni uh, a shot at forty three when George Lucas was coming up with his when he was younger. So the Force is definitely with me on this. So John Hoey's favorite series, Star Wars: Forces of Destiny, had three new episodes. One that just dropped today. Now, guys, can you fill me in? Because I haven't really watched uh, any of the episodes. I'm kind of behind a little bit. Can you tell me about the episode that dropped today? Well, the one that dropped today uh, had Sabine and uh, Hera going out on this mission. They were waiting to meet up with Ketsu Anyo for a run. And all of a sudden, they get to the, the, the waypoint where they're supposed to meet up. Ketsu comes screaming in way too fast. She ends up jumping off at the last second, and her bike gets destroyed. She ends up taking uh, Sabine's bike instead. They meet back up at the ghost later. She's like, where's Ketsu? Where's Ketsu? I'm worried about Ketsu. Ketsu finally shows up. The bike's been destroyed. And then Hera's like, don't don't get angry with her. Don't do something you'll regret. And then she ends up uh, forgiving her about the bike, and uh, all is well in the world. But it was a pretty dull episode overall you didn't miss much okay so dull is the force with you uh patrick on the new dull episodes of the forces of destiny well i actually enjoyed the first two so i will say the force is meh with me on these three together uh but i did enjoy the first two so i will give it a meh this week for all three john hoey i can only imagine that the force is with you on this (laughs) (laughs) james told me about the endor one with the falcon versus the ghost or whatever and said oh my god john is gonna hate this and then so so i watched it with the mindset that i was gonna hate it and i did um and the final line by leia at the end like saved me from pushing this whole series off of a giant cliff when she was just basically like han no one thinks the ghost is better than the Millennium falcon i was like all right finally like (laughs) jesus um but uh, I like like Pat was just saying that episode that dropped today was so stupid, like so stupid. It was so pointless. It was two minutes and th- like Pat describing it, I think was longer than the actual episode itself. Yes, <laughs> it felt longer too. It, it was two minutes and thirty seconds of someone talking about a bike and like being like, "No, I'm not mad at you. I'm gonna hug you." Like it's just. Keep in mind, this is a kids show, so this, uh, I know. But uh, even kids will be like, "Come on." Please. So, uh, no, the force is not. Is that with the, our kids going to say, come on? Is that? Yeah, come, uh, come, <laughs> on. come on. Uh, come on, guy. Give me, a, <laughs> g- give me a The Last Jedi TV spot. At least that's 45 <laughs> seconds of action, guy. The force is not with me on uh, Forces of Destiny. I'm out. All right. James Bainey, is the force with you <laughs> on 
I, the force is with me with forces of destiny in general. I will say if you're going to pick these three specific episodes out, it's definitely not with me on the one with Ketsu and the bike. It's definitely not with me with Sabine and Jin like running into each other and being like, Hey, who are you? Are you cool? You're not cool. <laughs> All right. Well, you should totally be cool. All right, you're cool. All right, we're good. And then, like, that's it. Yeah, that that's I all that watch. happened. I'm like, what? Yeah, what? I I love it when characters that we didn't think would ever interact actually end up interacting. Like, obviously, like Hera and Han. That's really cool to me. And that's why I I I did like that middle episode. I think it's funny because I think that's how pilots would talk to each other. You know what I mean? She's saying, I'm not doing anything until you admit my ship's better. You got to think Han would say the exact same thing. I'm not doing anything to you till you tell me the Falcon's better, you know? So I actually kind of like that banter between them. And I, John, you're right. The sa- Not saving grace, but the, the cool point to that one was watching Leia at the end say, you know, she's siding with Han on that one. Han, come on. You know, and she doesn't even have to admit anything. She's just helping him and his pride a little bit, you know, say, hey, you know, the the Millennium Falcon is the best ship in the galaxy. So, which is kind of funny because the whole live action series, she's like, what a bucket, bucket of junk like, <laughs> all the time. So, so uh, but yeah, but this is this is her, you know, after she's already fallen in love with Han and has admitted it mm-hmm. on uh, on Endor and stuff. So um, not these three episodes. Uh, there have been a lot better, but um, mm-hmm. so, so the force is not with me on forces of destiny this cut last couple weeks what i thought was pretty funny was out on the official star wars uh twitter like the day before they dropped that episode about the ghost and the falcon they were like which ship is better the ghost or the falcon the falcon won like over 90 percent and so oh, yeah like it reiterated duh. the line from leia it's like han no one thinks that the ghost is better than the falcon <laughs> mm-hmm. perfect exactly What's we have next? the poll results so i guess the force is kind of with me on this i mean i haven't really watched it so i'm gonna go by what you guys have said i'm a really big fan of the ghost actually and think it's way better than the millennium falcon um such a troll so job right there that, that's the biggest tr- that's the troll job of the century john <laughs> and it's just for you and um, you can find him at star wars bill <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how you feel about that quote at Star Wars Bill. Go ahead, tweet me. Tweet me all, uh, every nasty thing you want. Anyway, so the force is with me. On to the last story of the day. So Battlefront Two is pretty much two weeks away at this point. If you, especially if you pre-ordered it, and we got a brand new launch trailer about details of the gameplay, different options, and other features. Um, really, really enjoyed this one. Gives us some more insight into the multiplayer and uh, a little bit of a tidbit of the single player. So, James, I know you're excited for this, and I know Pat's excited for this. So, go ahead and start with us. Uh, is the Force with you on the new Battlefront 2 trailer? Uh, I have not played the uh, original Battlefront game at all. Like, I've never sat down and actually held a controller or watched anybody ever play it. Um, but I do know that people did kind of complain about the heroes and how there weren't that many and how they were overpowered so it was really cool to hear that they were going to try to fix that and one of the reasons the one of the ways they're fixing it is by bringing in a lot of these different uh heroes and we're watching these videos and man it feels so awesome i'm watching like yoda jump around i'm watching um kylo ren like just interact how i really think they would in the movie you know, um, their personalities come across in their moves, in the way they walk, in the way they interact with other characters and stuff. Um, I got to think this is just going to be oodles of fun for everybody who d- uh, is playing this game. So the force is with me for sure. Patrick Covey is the force with you. Oh, yeah. The force is with me like 150 percent right now. Uh, really excited for this game. I'm actually about to pre-order it. I did see a bunch of new TV spots pop up today, so officially all 14 uh, heroes and villains have been previewed, so you can go check those out on uh, Twitter and YouTube. Just got word that they're supposed to be doing a preview in a few days. A bunch of famous YouTubers who've been a part of the whole media campaign for the game will be flying to California and getting a first glimpse look at the campaign and the full multiplayer for the game. We just got confirmation the other day that the game is officially finished, guys. It is done. All we have to do is get it in our media paws, hop on uh, PC or any of the consoles, and just have a wonderful time. Really excited. And John Hoey, the gamer of the group, is the force with you on this? Yeah, I'm going to be mashing 
some uh, some buttons and and winning some wars in the stars mm-hmm. as uh, you guys put it before. Um, no, <laughs> I, I'm on. I may get back into gaming with this. I actually may legit try to um, upgrade to a PS4 and uh, grab this game because everything I'm seeing about it, I just love from uh, the graphics to what they're offering in terms of character availability, gameplay type, multiplayer, single player. It, it seems like they're really getting it right. From like we were saying, how some of the mistakes or drawbacks they made from the first Battlefront, it looks like mm-hmm. they're rectifying that so i'm all in the force is with me with uh, battlefront 2 absolutely and i'm gonna agree with everybody the force is 100 percent with me on this i've pre-ordered the game I'm really excited for november 14th to come around so i can get early access to it and uh, brag about it a little bit i'm really excited to do it play the single player campaign so the force is with me on it um guys thank you so much for taking a seat with us that's all we've got here patrick covey back to you bud <laughs> Thank you so much, Bill. Uh, Now we're going to move over to our next segment, which is Tweeting with the Resistance. And the question we asked out there in the Twitterverse was, who will say they have a bad feeling about this in hashtag The Last Jedi and when? So we asked you all out on Twitter, kicking it off first. James, what was your pick this week? My pick was Han Spinell. That's at Han underscore Spinell. He said, I'll add Rose. Uh, she's getting pulled from level, low-level resistance to infiltrating the First Order. Definitely have a bad feeling about this. And, of course, he's saying she's put in weird situations right now that she's, like, unfamiliar with and stuff like that. Plus, she's going to turn on everybody and totally turn Finn in. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just playing around. That's probably a bunk theory that I used to <laughs> stick with, but... Uh, I will say that uh, I think that's a pretty good call that she might actually be the one to to say it, and that would kind of feel refreshing at the same time, um, not a familiar character saying it, someone new. So, uh, yeah, I got to throw it out to you, Han. John, what's your pick this week? Um, my pick this week um, is me. I have a bad feeling um, that uh, Bill has some kind of samurai man bun in his hair right now that uh, you listeners can't see. But I promise you, it's it's terrifying. Yeah, but um, it's also very sexy. Yeah. Um, so my pick this week is um, at Jope77. That's J-O-P-E 77. And uh, I just picked this out of fun. He said, uh, it will be Kylo Ren saying, I have a good feeling about this. Um, so, <laughs> you know, he's a protagonist, right? So why wouldn't he have a good feeling about that? Um, but me personally, I think it's going to be Poe as he's about to crash that ski speeder and go sliding into that bunker. I think he's going to say, I have a bad feeling about this. But uh, like I always say, if I'm wrong, I'm going to delete this. And once again, we're going to have to delete a lot of episodes. A lot of oodles lo- of stuff. All, all the episodes you're ever on. Uh, or all the episodes, <laughs> period. Um, so Just Delete for, me. Yeah. <laughs> So my pick, I think it's going to be Finn, probably as he's entering the First Order lair when he's in disguise. And my tweet is from Eric, our friend Eric Friend, who says, Finn is indeed the one who should say it right before his fight with Captain Phasma. And based on her book, she will kick and tear him apart. Could not agree more. I think that the placement of when he'll say it uh, is probably a little off, but it wouldn't surprise me if that's what he said. Because I just feel that like he's got that kind of vibe in this movie, and I think that it would fit for his character. So that's where I think it is. Hey, my pick this week came from Mia at Mia Marie Macy on Twitter, who simply responded with, Rose! Like Titanic? Exactly, like Titanic. Near, (laughs) far, wherever you are. And that really was the extent of her tweet. She just simply said Rose with an exclamation point. Hey, she she got to the point, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And, of course, we'll be posting up new topics uh, this week to hear from you guys out there in the Twitterverse. So be sure to keep tweeting at us uh, your responses. You might just end up on the show next week. And you guys help make this show great every week, so we would like to say thank you. So thank you out there for tweeting at us. Let's wrap it up, guys. John, where can everybody find you? You can speaking of tweeting at us, you can find me uh, sometimes on our Twitter account at R B A T S W N N. You can find me at Johnny Hoey on Twitter. You can find me writing articles on StarWarsNewsNet.com. And every once in a while I pop into the canteen and see what you guys are saying. Someone the other day, I forget your name, I apologize, but you tagged me on the cantina on I guess we have a cooking section of the cantina, like Star Wars recipes, and you said you were listening to our podcast while you were cooking. So um cheers that's awesome that's cheers cheers to you but um 
Uh, my final thoughts are I'm going to go watch that uh, TV spot about 5 billion more times. And oh, yeah. uh, the Millennium Falcon is the greatest vehicle of all time. Mr. Samurai Buns, where can everybody find you? You can find me on the Twitter at Star Wars Bill. You can find me from time to time writing some articles for Star Wars Newsnet. Um, thank you guys so much. It's good to have a man bun. It's good to talk some Star Wars. I'm going to go watch that uh, TV spot uh, one more time than John has. <laughs> And Mr. Breaking the Scoops, where can everybody find you? Well, I mean, you guys can obviously find me Twitter and Instagram at Myra Trunks. Um, but you, this week, you're most likely going to find me at my house uh, shooting kids with a hidden fog machine and then opening the door really quickly and screaming at them, boo, and watching little, like, four-year-olds just, like, lose their mind because they're so scared. That happened, and uh, Trick or Treat was a lot of fun. So you're gonna so, do you're gonna do that on a random Monday, on a random Monday? No, yeah, I, uh, that's that's where you're gonna find me. So and if it, you want to is that find a Dragon me, Ball come reference? to my house. That is a Dragon <laughs> Ball. That? Re- that is a Dragon Ball. That reference. is a Dragon Ball reference. I didn't see any Dragon Ball trick or treaters. I was very disappointed. No, there was no Star Wars trick or treaters really? either. I couldn't believe that. I, yeah, I actually all... saw a pa- Goku Paw Patrol. I saw a Goku <laughs> and a Vegeta at the bars. So you saw, wait, that, you saw what at the bars? Go. A Goku and a Vegeta. She oh, wasn't a Vegeta. wearing. Okay. She wasn't wearing any underwear either. So, oh my goodness, it's vegetable in Japanese for you. Oh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and just so you guys know, I did enjoy my castle run last week. You can find me at Ganon one thirty six. That's G A N O N one three six on the Twitter and also over on the Cantina forum. Haven't already signed up for an account on the Cantina? No problem! Head on over to Star Wars Newsnet. Top left corner, you'll see a button that says the Cantina Forum. Sign up for a free account. It's a fun place. Come chat with us. We're always on there. And be a part of your Star Wars community. Also, subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. And don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes if you're listening on iTunes. If you have any questions about the podcast, you can contact us directly on our Twitter, R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N, and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Thank you all for listening. Hey, Akbar, can we wrap this thing up so we can go watch that trailer again? 